The following is a News Channel 8 Beautiful Oregon special. In Oregon's high mountain springs and lakes, a river is born. This is the story of the Willamette, from its sparkling beginnings to its toxic end, its Oregon's threatened treasure. Hello, I'm Tracy Berry. The Willamette is the 10th largest river in America and the lifeblood for a big part of Oregon. It draws its waters from the coast range to the west and the Cascades to the east. And it starts out clean, cool, and crystal clear. But as we all know, it doesn't stay that way. Its most identifiable beginning is Waldo Lake in the Cascades above Oak Ridge. That's where News Channel 8's environmental reporter, Gary Chittam, begins our story. A mile high in the Cascades, that's where you'll find Waldo Lake. And look at the colors. Stunning greens and cobalt blues, vivid tributes to its amazing clarity. Visitors can see Waldo's lake bottom at incredible depths. Oh, maybe 100 feet something. Here it's probably around maybe 80 or 90. <laughs> and it is clear. The visibility in Waldo Lake seems unlimited. It's legendary. <laughs> It's one of the purest lakes in the whole wide world. I mean, it's just, it's crystal clear water. It's pure water. So what happens to this water from up here at Waldo Lake? Visibility more than 100 feet to the bottom of the Willamette River. Visibility a few inches. Well, a lot of lives are touched between here and there, and the river pays the price. The North Fork of the Willamette gently rolls out of Waldo Lake and begins its 240-mile journey. Through burned out forests, over spectacular falls, the river flows untouched for miles. Then it encounters its first civilization, the community of West Fur, an old logging town, and meets its first Riverside residents. And this is just one of our local swimming holes. And this is right in, right in the city of West Fur. Henderson has lived along the Willamette in other Oregon cities, but this is home now, high in the headwaters, where it's still pure. Very obviously, the clarity of the water, you just, you know, it, you get spoiled here. In fact, living here, you get spoiled because you have access to do so many things. The water in the Willamette at West Fur is still incredibly clean, but that's about to change when the river meets its first dam. We'll have that part of the story next. The wild Willamette is about to be tamed as it meets its first man-made obstacle, a dam 
that drastically changes its character. Here's Gary Chittum. Just west of Oak Ridge, the North Middle Fork and the Middle Fork of the Willamette come together. The Unified River gets its first dose of treated sewage. It also picks up silt and debris from logging and other activities on the banks. This all affects river clarity, but it's nothing compared to what it's about to encounter. Lookout Point Reservoir, the relatively clear Willamette hits the murky reservoir backwaters. The collision forms a stark line in the water. It's the end of the river's wild run and the beginning of devastating human effects. The reservoir slows and heats the water. Dangerous diseases and non-native fish and plants thrive in the warmer Willamette. Lookout Point and its sister dam, Dexter, deliver a one-two punch before releasing the Willamette for a date with its first major population centers. For a short distance, the Willamette shows signs of a natural river. It splits into channels that speed it up and cool it. It's a brief reprieve. Nothing harms a river quite like a city. The Willamette accepts the worst Eugene has to offer, street runoff, industrial and human waste. The river is squeezed into narrow channels to accommodate development and urban views. It also gains in size and strength. The Mackenzie joins in here. And the Willamette is now a major river, and it's flowing through a highly developed agricultural region. And as it rolls into Corvallis, it's now full of toxins. In Corvallis, the city pulls its public drinking water from the Willamette and replaces it with more city pollutants and waste. And now, the Willamette gets ready for its next assault. The heart of farm country lies ahead. A hundred years of farming leaves the banks of the river barren. It's lost its ability to protect itself from an onslaught of pesticides and other chemicals that run freely off the fields into the water. The denuded banks erode a little more each spring. There are no root systems to hold the banks together. The water temperature rises again. The many groves of shade trees are gone. Some non-native and other warm water fish, bass, northern pike minnow, and carp, thrive and change the river's biology. It's a mess. But Oregon farmers are changing. We have close to a mile of river frontage, which starts somewhere about down in over in there. Farmer Peter Kanegi refuses to farm right up to the river. He's established a protected buffer of trees between his crops and the Willamette. I view that buffer as a very important part of this, uh, of this farm. What he gives up in farmland, Kanegi gains in flood protection and peace of mind. The buffer filters off farm runoff and absorbs floodwaters coming the other way. It cools the river and strengthens the banks and takes some of the sting out of the harmful effects of farming on the Willamette. It's our responsibility to do the best job we can and, and not to leave any bigger footprint on the landscape than we absolutely need to. Farmers like Peter Kanegi have taken great strides to protect the Willamette, but at this point in its journey, the river is running rich with poisons and the people and fish who depend on it are in trouble. That story, when we come back. Came back again, got him back again, little guy. Despite its contamination, the Willamette is still the focal point of the valley that bears its name. Swimmers, boaters, anglers all flock to it and all of them face a risk of toxic exposure. Here again, Gary Chittam. Salem's proud history of politics and industry is complemented by its fishing legacy. For decades, guides like Mark J. Henry have taken out government leaders, visitors, and locals for a crack at trophy Willamette River salmon. I'm very disgusted and I'm very sad to see something this beautiful be destroyed. The days of year-round fishing on the Willamette are over. 
Some salmon and steelhead runs are too small to risk harming. Others are almost gone. As it is now, I have to go to the Rogue River for my spring Chinook. I have to go to the Columbia River to catch trophy sturgeon in June, steelhead in July, and then fall Chinook. So I can't sleep in my own bed. Henry has watched the major offenders, polluters like Mills, close up and leave. But he is convinced the poisonous discharges they left behind are still in the river and the fish. I would not eat a crappie, a bass, a sturgeon, or anything that lives year round in the Willamette. The worst contamination and the most mysterious is yet to come. We're now entering the stretch of river known as Newburg Pool, a section known for its wide, smooth areas, perfect for recreation. Well, here we go. On any given summer weekend, the boat ramp at Wilsonville is packed with families ready to play. It's a shame. It's a beautiful river, but uh, it's really getting dirty. These are the most disturbing images of this section of the river, deformed fish. Scientists are at a loss. They can't figure out what's causing it but river users are starting to shy away. Most of the people I talk to uh, don't want to go in it, but if I ask if we're going skiing, they will say, go to the lake, they'll agree, but coming to the river, they usually decline. But others are willing to take the risks. The river is their playground, or even their home. So every night, we sit out there till the sun goes down with the geese and the herons. And Jana Russell and her husband gave up a large home for life on the river. They must constantly install and repair equipment that protects their home from the river's unpredictable flow and debris. But they can't do anything to protect themselves from the growing toxic threat. And I'm worried. Russell is scared of the future. She sees a steady decline of the Willamette's health and a decline in the efforts to protect it. This last decade has been um, we've seen negative progress. We've gone backwards, uh, not in a little way, in a huge way. Uh, we're not being good stewards any longer. And Russell knows what lies ahead for her beloved Willamette. Hers is one of the last homes on the river before Willamette Falls. And the most contaminated part of the Willamette is just around the corner. Around that corner is Portland and its harbor, the last stop before the Willamette disappears into the Columbia. That story is coming up next. We've now reached the last stretch of the Willamette. It's about to merge with the Columbia, but before it does, it will suffer its greatest damage. We've seen the best of the Willamette. Now Gary shows us the worst. One, two, three. The Portland area enjoys its river. It's the city center. It's where we play, celebrate, and do business. We take the best the river has to offer, and we give back, but it's not a welcome gift. An inadequate city sewer system overflows virtually every time it rains and dumps directly into the river. It's a disgusting mixture of human and street waste, and it leaves the Willamette unsafe for human contact. But there's more than just human bacteria to worry about. And all along the way, everybody's been dumping into the river, whether it's farmers, timber, industries, the cities, even the boaters. And then what we have is a polluted river, a very, very badly polluted river. So polluted, the federal government has stepped in and slapped it with an embarrassing title of toxic super fund. That allows the Willamette cleanup to begin while the legal issues are settled later. The Willamette in Portland is a federal cleanup site, right here in Oregon, a state that prides itself on environmental protection. This didn't happen overnight. Portland has polluted the river for years. The industries that lined its banks were allowed to dump deadly waste directly into the river. At times, the harbor turned white with chemicals. Unknowing residents exposed themselves to dangerous toxins just by being near it. 
But even back then, the cries for a cleanup could be heard. The state sanitary authority regards the entire Willamette River, that is all the way downstream from Salem, as too filthy for swimming. Portlanders demanded the river be cleaned up once. They can do it again. We're going uh, downstream at uh, Linton Upper. The busy Portland Harbor is tugboat captain Don Gustafson's second home. He's watched the river change over the last two decades. I like working on the river. His daily work takes him past the contaminated sites, sites where the groundwater that seeps into the Willamette is as thick as motor oil. Sites so toxic, only protected experts can remove the poison. Sites where workers constantly try to stop leaking contaminants from reaching the river. Gustafson sees it all, but still holds out hope. It can clean up if they try hard enough. It can, and they can do a lot, of, a lot of work to it. And it will take a lot of work. But the promise is there. Wild salmon still manage to migrate through the Willamette each year. It is still home to most of the valley's species of fish and wildlife. The Willamette is in trouble, but it's still alive, and Oregonians are committed to healing it. Well, we should care for a number of reasons. Uh, I think uh, uh, clean watersheds are an indication of the health of the ecosystem, and we all depend on that, all of us, uh, for, our, for our livelihood and for our, for our health. Uh, as population grows, the Willamette will increasingly be a source of, uh, of drinking water for people here. It's a source of recreation. Uh, it's, it's key to our agricultural uh, industry, uh, and, it's a, and it's a wonderful nat uh, a natural treasure that we have here. And, and I think it speaks a lot about us as Oregonians and about our, our legacy uh, in terms of how we take care of this, uh, this uh, river. Obviously, the Willamette will never boast the purity it once did. Human hands have changed it forever. But experts say those same hands can undo some of the damage, restore some of the health, and give the Willamette, Oregon's threatened treasure, a chance to heal itself. For more information on what you can do to help preserve the Willamette and keep the rest of Oregon beautiful, log on to our website at www.kgw.com, then click on the beautiful Oregon icon. really the, uh, the lifeblood of, of this valley. It's one of Oregon's uh, jewels. I do know from 35 years ago the parts of the Willamette are a lot better than they used to be. All the blame for Portland's slowness to clean up its own filth cannot be placed upon the public official. And there are those who have described your Willamette as the dirtiest major river in the Pacific Northwest. But I think as a community, I think as a city, I think we're embarrassed. I think we're scared. I think we recognize that we haven't made the progress that we pledged to make. And so the challenge of cleaning up the river, I think, is uh, much different than it was uh, 25 years ago. The Willamette can clean and healthy again. And it can support wild fish. It can be clean for swimming in. It can be, this fish can be safe to eat. But it's a matter of if we're going to change the way we do things. It's, it's a matter of choices. Do we choose to farm differently? Do we choose to build better sewage treatment systems? Are we willing to not build our cities and our houses and our farms right up against the edge of the rivers? We can do it. The big question is when are we going to do it? <laughs>